All right, welcome. You're taking a look at a live shot here at our nation's capital here in Washington, D.C., uh, right above the, the White House here. Brian Glenn, Philip Torino joining you on this Tuesday as we await President Trump's press conference in regards to the COVID vaccine executive orders, all a part of Operation Warp Speed. And he is planning on speaking at around 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And of course, we'll have that press conference live and uninterrupted for your consumption as we step back in the shot here. Uh, welcome, everybody. I know you guys have probably been enjoying the bus tour that's been going across this country uh, that we've been a part of and bringing you all the cities and all the activities in conjunction to that. But to today, we're here at our nation's capital here in Washington, D.C., in front of the White House, awaiting for probably the most anticipated press conference we've seen for the vaccine. I would say so. Uh, you just heard a lot of information from Governor Abbott of Texas. I think you were just tweeting about that uh, in regards to how the vaccine is going to be handled. What did you hear in, in the midst of that? Governor Abbott basically spoke to the media here uh, and said, look, you know, we're excited to have this vaccine pushed out. Of course, uh, it's it's unbelievably how quick that we've seen a vaccine developed and pushed through approval and get to the market in, in such a quick time. And he talked about some of the frontline workers getting the vaccine first, school teachers, medical uh, workers in hospitals, things like that. They are the ones that would get it. But he also talked a little bit about the uh, transportation of this virus. And of course, I'm sure President Trump is going to address all of that here coming up at two o'clock. But uh, Governor Abbott out here excited about what's going on and talked about uh, even the state of Texas getting twice the amount of vaccines uh, than people who actually tested positive for COVID-19, which is probably a good start when it comes to getting these to people in need. I would say so. And of course, we have to give kudos to President Trump for his fantastic handling of, of this virus and how he's handled Operation Warp Speed, obviously, which he put together, which is a joint effort between the private sector and the military to create a rapid vaccine. And he, he did create it in just under, what is it, about nine months going on now, 10 yeah. months. And so really a tremendous effort by the Trump administration here, and they've delivered on that promise. And I think one thing that the president's going to do here today in the midst of signing this executive, executive order is he wants to make sure that the American people are being put first, considering we're the ones who spearheaded this effort to make sure that Americans were safe and healthy through the effort of a vaccine delivery. And we just saw overnight in the UK, I think a 90 plus year old grandmother was the first person to receive the vaccine. I believe it was the Pfizer vaccine, if I'm not mistaken. Taken. And so a lot of people on social media came out and said, well, wait, wait a minute, you know, this was something that we should have at first, America first. And of course, Donald Trump stands for America first. That's one of his biggest platforms he had. So I would ensure that he's going to address that uh, today as well. But I know if you go back and think about March and April and May, when this thing really started to get in, we saw a lot of the shutdowns, a lot of the uh, school closures, business closing down. The talk was of developing a vaccine. A lot of people said it could be years before that was done. And you just said it took about eight months. It, it took absolutely no time. And of course, we have to credit all those involved. Vice President Mike Pence for spearheading the COVID task force, who really tried very hard to, to stop the spread of this virus. And they found the correct uh, mitigators to, to stop the spread and, and slow it down during those summer months. And, uh, you know, just based on the science, it may pick up here a little bit in the winter. But I think the Trump administration is confident that through this vaccine and through the mitigation uh, efforts that they have developed over the course of this virus in just the last uh, nine months, they're going to have a, a healthy America. We will have a healthy America very soon. Absolutely. We just had, I believe, the attorney. Uh, uh, Surgeon General. Surgeon General. Thank Jerome you. Adams. Jerome Adams was just behind us doing a presser as well. And he thanked, he thanked us because we said, we're praying for you. Everyone on your right side is praying for the president. We're praying for his, his health staff, the administrators. We're praying for the media that we can all get through this. And, of course, we're very proud to have a vaccine right there uh, in our grasp to, to hopefully get this country back open again. And of course, that's been one of the headlines we've seen across the country, uh, different states uh, really walking back their restrictions, California, New York uh, in particular. And we've seen all of the actions uh, come out of New York. We've seen the restaurant industry just crippled. I saw a stat today that said one in six restaurants that are closing uh, had been open 
for at least 30 years. And for someone who's been in the in the restaurant industry, myself, my family, I know it's a very difficult industry to make it. You've got some restaurants that have been open since the late 1800s. They have survived so much only to be closed down by the states that they actually do business in. So I think it's very, the timing of this vaccine is perfect right now. Uh, oddly enough, we could have had it maybe a few days before the uh, the election. I know that Pfizer came out the day after the election and announced that they had a vaccine that was a 95, 98% effective. That would have been very helpful in my opinion if they would have came out with that prior to the election. Of course, and there's some speculation regarding the, the political move there that that may have been but nevertheless, there is a vaccine which the Trump administration is solely responsible for, uh, obviously in partnership with these private companies in, in developing. Um, I think it's kind of funny when we see the Biden transition team try to pull credit for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. at, at the time, they were just a campaign who had no governmental power and they weren't involved in any way with the private sector in making this. So kudos to President Trump, his delivery. Uh, one thing he's always made a key part of his presidency is promises made, promises kept. He said we're going to get a vaccine and he kept his promise and now we have a vaccine here. So. And I think that goes a lot to what he stands for. You know, he's been in the private sector for his whole entire life. He's done nothing but build successful businesses and build buildings and things like that. So this was in his repertoire, if you will, if I can use the wheelhouse. word. Wheelhouse. His wheelhouse of getting things done. It's exactly what he's done in terms of the vaccine. And of course, as we get the vaccine and we was rolled out across America in a, in a joint effort between the government and the private sector. You're going to see uh, more of these more states opening up. You know, I my home state is Texas, and we just heard from uh, Governor Greg Abbott talking about the deployment in Texas. So as this vaccine rolls out, you'll see these states perhaps loosen up on their restrictions and opening up. Because right now, that is the number one thing I think that is on the small business mind of making sure that we do not uh, lose such a huge contribution to our national economy, which is the small business owner. They make up for the majority of uh, employment in this co in this country. You know, you look at big business and of course, you know, gigantic companies that have, you know, tens of thousands of employees. But when you really look at it, it's a small business owner. It's a guy on Main Street America who's really the heartbeat of this country. And those are the ones that are being affected the most by these shutdowns. Of course. And uh, that's that's so all that's all so important being walking around here we've seen many small businesses who have been hurt by these lockdowns but uh, you know hopefully we're in a, in a new phase with the vaccine and with all the mitigation uh, tools that we have how to slow the spread that we won't have to worry about that anymore and I just want to segue into something you know at right said we've always promised to show the crowds <laughs> while there is no crowds here uh, we do believe that we should be expecting to see the president uh, tr transition from what we have is the West Wing over here into the Eisenhower Executive Office building, which would be straight in front of me. And at any moment, he'll be going in there to talk about the vaccine developments that have come along. And uh, we we'll see it. Maybe he makes the track across. You know, maybe we uh, maybe video bombs us as we're going on. <laughs> I'd love to see the president step in our shot there. But yeah, we're, we're waiting for him to come out as well and get this press conference going. Uh, and let's transition into the small business. Uh, Mike Lindell has been such a patriot when it comes to small business. What a story the guy has as far as the redemption that he's had in his life, not only his personal life, but his business as well. And that leads me to this. If you're out shopping this holiday season and you need to get some gifts, a lot of people don't want to get out. They want to stay at home. It's now more convenient than ever to go onto MyPillow.com. That's MyPillow.com and click and save a bunch of money up to 66% off all the products there. And, and, and Philip, we were talking about the dog beds, the dreams, the Giza dream sheets, yeah. the pillows, the towels. They're, I'm obsessed with the towels, by the way. There, there's so much stuff. If you, have, I mean, we have pets, Go ahead, get them a dog bed. Yeah. You know, get you get even get your dog a, a, a Chris, Christmas present this year. Yeah, but here's a guy that's really taken a challenge and, and 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 has been bold about his faith not only in the Lord above, but his trust in this country and 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 being a patriot and if, to come out like he has, and really put himself out there. And he's he's gotten some critics that come out to him as being a conservative and and standing for Trump. So we it's time for us 
uh, the American people, the viewers like yourself, to step forward and support Mike Lindell over at MyPillow.com. And log on. If you've already got a pillow, why not buy two or three more and give them to a friend? And not only those, pro those proceeds help Mike Lindell over at MyPillow, it also helps uh, us at RSBN to, to be able to continue coverage like this. Yeah, absolutely. Contributes to what all the causes that we're doing. Of course, you know us uh, from rallies, and that's kind of in our wheelhouse. Well, now that we're past the rallies, we're getting into an arena that uh, we need we need help as far as financial help of making sure we can attend all these press hearings and things like that. So please go onto MyPillow.com and put in the code word here, the promo code here, RSBN, that's RSBN, and get up to 66% off on those amazing products there just in time for Christmas. If you're just now joining, I'm Brian Glenn, Philip Torino. We are live outside the White House waiting for the two o'clock press conference for Operation Warp Speed. This is all about that vaccine that's an anticipated vaccine that hopefully we can get deployed in this country and get this country open again. And if you're watching us right now, Philip, I always like to see where are you watching us from? We get a lot of people from overseas. Perhaps you live in the UK and you've heard some people that are getting in line for a vaccine or perhaps the news in that area of the country. Let us know where you're watching us. We always like to see that our viewers are all around the world of course yeah i mean we have viewers all around the world watching us here at right side as we continue to bring you live uninterrupted coverage of everything that the president is doing his rallies his speeches stuff like that so continue to stay tuned and i've always said it what we're doing here at right side broadcasting network is absolutely unprecedented uh we i like to call us a grassroots media company and we are only able to do it through your support so big thank you to you the viewers and the supporters and the listeners who come to right side Bro broadcasting network as your source of information. We will continue to bring you as much as we possibly can whenever we can and never let you down. I watched an uh, earlier press conference uh, with Greg Abbott. One of the reporters asked a question about uh, the deployment of this vaccine. And of course, we all have heard that uh, it needs to be shipped in extremely cold conditions. So mm -hmm. it needs the transportation needs to be needs needs to be cold, needs to be stored cold. And that was an issue that might come up. And of course, I'm, I'm sure President Trump has a solution to that. Yes, absolutely. And uh, the vaccine is a, a tremendous thing that they're working on in order to make sure that Americans are healthy and safe. And of course, we will hear the details of that vaccine and all that goes into it in this press conference here. I don't want to allude too much into the vaccine. I'm not a medical expert myself. Uh, neither is Brian. You know, none of us here claim to be. But we will we will show you everything that is brought forward by the scientists. And I'm sure the the Surgeon General and the Secretary of Health and Human Services all inside when this press conference begins. Absolutely. And we'll have it all for you because like you said you know whether or not you decide you want to take the vaccine or not that's up to you uh, but it is good to know that our president has really put his best foot forward to deliver an effective vaccine to the american population and of course his mantra has always been america first philip and i'm one of these people that i read it that you know a 90 year old grandmother in the uk was the first person to get uh, the vaccine i thought to myself no wait a minute shouldn't shouldn't we be the first ones right. and uh but lo and behold we'll find out what he has to say uh, later today but it all comes about getting this country open and we've all seen the stories on social media the small business owners a lady at pine hill grill over in southern california was was uh, walked out of her business and, and, and saw that nbc studios were set up to shoot a movie in, in, in their parking lot so the catering tents were set up and she was almost in tears talking about the hypocrisy of, of Gavin Newsom of shutting down small business, but then allowing a, a movie, a, essentially a television production company to shoot it right in their parking lot. I, I think that's just goes back to the hypocrisy of this, uh, these entire draconian lockdowns, which we have seen across uh, many states and large cities. It's been unfair to many small businesses and people who are just trying to make a buy. So as I have said before, try to usher in a message of, of optimism. We, I think this vaccine will be extremely uh, helpful for the American people, will be helpful for small business. Finally, some of these government officials may be able to look and say, okay, we are stepping into a new stage, getting things back to normal, and I think that'll be good for small business. Well, Philip, you and I have traveled across this country since October, and we've seen variations of a lockdown. And I'm, I'm gonna say this, I think Michigan, in my opinion, was the one state, uh, and we were in Detroit, we were in Lansing, we were in Grand Rapids, we were in Traverse City. I really saw it. I saw more restaurants closed. 
uh, more restaurants with really their hands tied behind their back in terms of what they can do. Of course. And there are certain states that are really suffering right now. So obviously Michigan's much different than the state of Florida where you, right. where you reside and Texas myself. So uh, there's a lot of states that are going to be watching this press conference going, okay, let's get this vaccine out. Let's let's get around the curve here and let's get ahead of this thing and get our I'm, country back open for business. I'm sure the people of Michigan feel that way. We were just there uh, less than maybe a week ago, I would say, and there was no indoor dining. You can only grab food and walk out with it. Uh, so that's extremely kind of problematic when you don't really have somewhere to go back to. Like we just had And it's minimal. And, and, yeah. And the business from mobile and curbside is very minimal. You got to keep in mind, folks, these restaurants have had to completely uh, restructure their business model. So if you're a fine dining, think about this for a second. If you're a fine dining establishment and 95% of your business is walk in, sit down, enjoy your meal, all of a sudden you're forced to push that outside on the curb. And by the way, it's 30 mid 30s here in Washington DC and not a whole lot of people want to sit outside at night that can really destroy your business model at night in the morning it's super cold in these in these northern states in the midwest and the north uh, I think that's something that that people don't want to do nobody wants to sit outside or even if you do sit outside then they put you inside this massive tent mm -hmm. which well you might as well be inside at that point because it's wrapped in plastic there's no circulation there's no air circulation so what difference does it make yeah so hopefully this vaccine will just improve all of that the quality of life for all of us and a little bit of peace of mind that we have uh, a, a, a solution to beat this uh, COVID. Uh, anyway, if you just now join us, let us step aside and take a look at what we're looking at. It's, uh, I would say, quite chilly day here in our nation's capital. I'm not going to lie to you for a southern boy here that's used to a little bit of warm temperatures. But uh, there you have it. You can see the beautiful reefs that have been put on the White House. Of course, we were here just a couple weeks ago, and we were able to uh, see a lot of that, of them putting all the decorations up. We had a firsthand look at the Christmas decoration tour as well. So just a uh, beautiful scene here in the nation's capital. And I was talking to people earlier today, walking around normally pre-COVID, this place is packed. The city is packed. The streets are packed. Uh, people, tourists are out and about. Not the case now. It is really kind of a ghost town compared to what it normally is here in the nation's capital. But um, the spirit of Christmas is alive here at the White House. Of course, we were here when Melania Trump came up for the Christmas tree ceremony. We saw it being decorated, took a quick tour inside as well, which was nice. Uh, but now the next big thing right now is just to get ahead of the curve here and get this vaccine rolled out so we can get this country uh, back open. And of course, we haven't really talked yet, Philip, about what's going on in the courts. I know that tomorrow I'm off to Wisconsin to cover some of the developing things there. And earlier today, Philip, uh, we saw uh, Kaylee come out with a statement about the great state of Texas. Yes, Texas actually sued uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as well as a few other states that are in challenge here that the president's legal team is challenging uh, to take it straight to the Supreme Court. Uh, we found out through some some advice that actually what happens is when one state sues another, it goes straight to the Supreme Court because of the gravity of the situation. So Texas has sued a few states, sued the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for sure. And we'll see what happens with this as they challenge these election results. Some of the things I saw on Twitter was uh, hashtag God bless Texas. You know, perhaps that could be the first uh, boot that drops. Uh, no pun intended for you Texans that actually kicks off this whole process. And of course, if you're like me, Philip, and the number one question you see in your social media is what's going to happen with the presidential election? Is he going to quote win end quote? I, we all think that he has won and we've seen the evidence of him winning the White House. So uh, I can only think that uh, now it's just up to the courts to decide whether or not that gets upheld. And of course, the uh, Supreme Court is the ultimate in determining that. And we will continue to uh, bring all the latest developments in regards to what's happening with this election in the courts. I'll be in Wisconsin. Of course, now I would imagine a lot of eyes are in the state of Texas. I'm sure we'll probably deploy our Texas crew down there as well. Uh, to cover that. But it seems like we are coming to maybe the end. I wouldn't say the end of the tunnel because that's not the word I'm looking for. The, the, the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's just say that because we all know that on December 14th uh, is when the Electoral College is set to cash their votes. But of course, that could all change. And that date 
is not set in stone. The only date that's set in stone, we you talked about this right. yesterday, is Couldn't January have a vaccine 20, before January the end of the, the year. And the only date, some so. scoffed at that time. Right. So, it looks a like vaccine we're by away. the end of this when year. Uh, is that possible in your view? Operation well, Brian, you know what's speed. I'll step aside and uh, let you guys take a look at the White House. And of course, as soon as it happens, we'll bring it all to you live right here on RSBN. people in the arms real soon. I still think 12 to 18 months is an aggressive schedule, and I think it's going to take longer than that to do so. There's no prospect that there's going to be a vaccine available for the majority of the American people before the middle of next year. It is impossible to get that done by the end of the year. Operation Warp Speed is unequaled and unrivaled anywhere in the world. The single greatest mobilization in U.S. history, pioneering, developing, and manufacturing therapies and vaccines in record time. Operation Warp Speed is doing something that's never been done before in history. The first Americans will get shots in arms in the second half of December. That's incredible, Elizabeth. The, the timeline has just been jaw-dropping. We were able to and empowered to make all the right calls and decisions. Well, this is a rather remarkable moment because it is true. This is Warp Speed. Warp Speed is being run in a non-political way. Uh, in a way we can be proud of. We believe we're going to have people getting vaccinated, millions of people, before Christmas this year. It's just unheard of in the history of public health as a compliment. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. I'm honored to welcome doctors, scientists, industry executives, and state and local leaders to our historic Operation Warp Speed Vaccine Summit. It's been some journey for all of us. It's been an incredible success. We're grateful to be joined by Vice President Mike Pence, who has done an absolutely incredible job on the Coronavirus Task Force. Mike, thank you. Stand up, Mike. Great job. We're here to discuss a monumental national achievement. From the instant the coronavirus invaded our shores, we raced into action to develop a safe and effective vaccine at breakneck speed. It would normally take five years, six years, seven years, or even more. In order to achieve this goal, we harness the full power of government, the genius of American scientists, and the might of American industry to save millions and millions of lives all over the world. We're just days away from authorization from the FDA, and we're pushing them hard, at which point we will immediately begin mass distribution. Before Operation Warp Speed, the typical time frame for development and approval, as you know, uh, could be infinity. And we were very, very happy that uh, we were able to get things done at a level that nobody has ever seen before. The gold standard vaccine has been done in less than nine months. On behalf of the entire nation, I want to thank everyone here today who has been involved in this extraordinary American initiative. I also want to recognize members of my administration who have worked tirelessly in this effort. Uh, Alex Azar, please, Alex. Where's Alex? Thank you, Alex. Great job. Monsef Slawi, where are you, Monsef? Thank you very much. Great job. A man who's now going to be very important, General Gus Perna. I have no doubt about it, right? Logistics. Jared Kushner's worked so hard. Where's Jared? Jared, wherever you may be. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Dr. Deborah Burks. Deborah. Thank you very much, Deborah. Admiral Brett Guar. Where is Brett? Great job you've been doing, Brett. Surgeon General Jerome Adams. Jerome, thank you very much. Terrific. Dr. Robert Redfield. Robert, thank you very much. Appreciate it. 
Administrator Seema Verma. Seema, thank you. Dr. Peter Marks. Peter. Yes, Peter. Thank you. Paul Mango, Adam Bowler, and Brad Smith. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you all very much. Incredible job. And, and many others also. Many, many others. We're also grateful to be joined by Governors Greg Abbott. Who is Greg? <laughs> Bill Lee. Bill? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Ron DeSantis. Ron? Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great job, Ron. And John Bell Edwards. John Bell. Thank you. Thank you, John Bell. Thank you very much. As well as Senator John Barrasso, who is a fantastic doctor also, by the way, I have to say. When, we, when I need info on that subject, I call up John. Thank you, John, very much. Senator Steve Daines, congratulations on a great win. Great win. That was easier than you thought, it turned out, right? It was a little easier than you thought. Great going. We're proud of you. Congressman Greg Walden. Greg, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Congressman Brad Wenstrup. Thank you, Brad. Great job. And many, many others. My administration provided a total of $14 billion to accelerate vaccine development and to manufacture all of the top candidates in advance, long in advance. As a result of this unprecedented investment, we are exceedingly proud that both Pfizer and Moderna have announced that their vaccines are approximately 95 percent effective, which is a number that nobody expected to be able to get to, far exceeding anything that really we, that anybody thought. We went out and we said, what do you think a maximum would be? And I think, doctors, we all came up to the conclusion that something like that would be really incredible. We have other candidates looking right now. We have uh, some big ones that we're going to be announcing very soon. We have some companies, great, great companies out there you all know about, Johnson & Johnson and, uh, and others, and they're all coming in, and they're coming in very quickly. We expect to have some news on that very shortly. And uh, we have worked wor very well with the companies, but if for any reason we have any problems, we will be instituting the Defense Production Act, and we will make sure that we don't have any problems for very long. We've instituted it before. Two additional companies, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. Uh, as you know, the Johnson & Johnson is a one-dose, one-shot vaccine, so we're going to see how that works. That would be very helpful if that all came out, and I think it probably will. Also, they're showing tremendous, uh, tremendous promise, all of them, tremendous problem. We're, we're, uh, we're very hopeful that the FDA will authorize the Pfizer vaccine within days. We've got to get it moving. And Moderna vaccine almost immediately thereafter. Uh, large numbers of tests and samples have been done, so hopefully that'll go very quickly. If authorized, tens of millions of vaccine doses will be available this month. And we'll get it distributed very quickly. We have that all set. And hundreds of millions more will quickly follow. Every American who wants the vaccine will be able to get the vaccine. And uh, we think by spring, we're going to be in a position that uh, nobody would have believed possible just a few months ago. Yeah. Amazing. Really amazing. They say, it's, they say it's somewhat of a miracle, and I think that's true. The plan we put forward prioritizes the elderly and patients with underlying conditions as well as health care workers and first responders. The uh, ultimate decision rests with the governors of the various states. And I hope the governors make wise decisions who will decide where the vaccines will go in their state and who will get them first. We urge the governors to put America's seniors first. And also, I think those who work with seniors, which obviously you're going to have to do that. I think they have to go together and uh, doctors, nurses, first responders, etc. Uh, this uh, will quickly and dramatically reduce deaths and hospitalizations. And within a short period of time, I think uh, we want to get back to normal, the very standard phrase. We want to just get back to normal, get back to where we were a little more than nine months ago. We we're doing incredibly. And in many respects, we're still doing incredibly with our stock markets and everything else, which are hitting all new highs. We've 
already finalized a partnership with Walgreens and CVS, whose executives join us today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. And they will deliver vaccines directly to nursing homes as soon as the states request that they do so. Later today, General Gus Perna will outline the detailed plan to rapidly distribute the vaccine to every state, territory, and tribe. States have designated over 50,000 sites that will receive the vaccine. We've worked very closely with the states. Actually, we've had very good relationships with the governors. I almost think all of the governors, at least in those conference calls that are somewhat secret, other than sometimes on occasion, Mike, the press will break in, which is fine too. <laughs> it's amazing how you leave those rooms and about 10 seconds later, there wasn't even time for a leak. They were on the call, but that's all right. So you assume that. You always assume that. But they'll be going through pharmacies, hospitals, healthcare providers. Through our partnership with FedEx, UPS, and McKesson, we'll ship doses from warehouses directly to the designated sites. And we're thrilled to be joined by representatives of those really great American companies. Those companies have worked with us, and they've been Incredible to work with, and I want to thank you all for being here. Please, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. As I've stated all along, and I guess as you saw pretty vividly, I heard about the, uh, I heard about what they were going to show prior to my coming. Uh, you saw that very few people thought that this was possible. Uh, of course, they'll be saying now, we always told you it was so, but... We have them saying a little bit different, but uh, it has been incredible and it will end the pandemic. It will end the pandemic and we're working with other nations, as you see actually by looking at your screen today, we're working very closely with other nations also to get the vaccines out to other nations. And uh, that's very important. We work with the world. We're working with the world. We have great companies and we're working with the world. In just a few minutes, I'll sign an executive order to ensure that the United States government prioritizes the getting out of the vaccine to American citizens before sending it to other nations. Now, if necessary, I told you, we'll invoke uh, the Defense Production Act, but we don't think it'll be necessary. If it is, it's a very powerful act, as you know, because uh, we've used it uh, very, very successfully. Uh, while we begin to swiftly deploy the vaccine, we'll continue to expand the availability of groundbreaking therapies. Since April, advances in treatments have already helped reduce the mortality rate by 85%. Think of that, 85%. Uh, it's an incredible number. I've delivered on my solemn promise to make the antibody treatments. They're brilliant, they're highly successful, available to every American, and we're doing that free of cost, totally free of cost. So we're making them available and uh, they're available now. And if somebody gets sick, uh, it works uh, where they go and they get treatment if that's what the doctors are prescribing. And uh, it's been incredible, the success. And when you hear 85%, that's some number. To me, that's a number that goes along with anything else, uh, including the vaccines, when you think about it, as well as we've done with the vaccines, when you hear 85 uh, percent people people find that one hard to believe but you look at the stats and you see what's happening and you look at other countries they're having tremendous difficulties in europe tremendous beyond relatively beyond what we're having they're having them all over the world but this will vanquish the the problem this horrible scourge as i call it the china virus because that's where it came from and the virus uh, has really uh, been looked at and studied all over the world and our scientists, our industrial and economic uh, mobilization has been like nobody else in the world could have done. And uh, it's very important that we share that with others and other nations. I've worked and invoked the Defense Production Act over 100 times to manufacture essential supplies in the United States. Despite the grim projections from the media eight months ago where they said this was impossible, they actually said, and you saw that, a little bit, but I could give you uh, two hours worth of it. Uh, but they said it will never happen. You could never do it. It was a pipe dream. Uh, but we, uh, we did something that nobody thought was possible. And we also did it where no American who has needed a ventilator has been denied a ventilator. 
uh, when we when this first came out, we weren't equipped for that. Nobody was equipped for that. And we're now making ventilators, and uh, we have all we need in this country, but we're sending them to countries all over the world. And we're making thousands and thousands of ventilators a month. The United States has also created the largest, most advanced, and most innovative testing program in the world by far. We've conducted over 200 million tests. Think of that, 200 million tests. More than all of the European Union combined. It's not even close. Just 10 months ago, none of these innovations even existed. The tremendous progress that we've made is a testament to what our nation is capable of. When America is faced with a challenge, we come through, and we always come through to overcome every hardship and surmount every obstacle. And I think you'll be seeing that over the next few months. Uh, the numbers should skyrocket downward. We are the most exceptional nation in the history of the world. Today, we're on the verge of another American medical miracle. And that's what people are saying. People that aren't necessarily big fans of Donald Trump are saying, whether you like him or not, this is one of the greatest miracles in the history of modern day medicine or any other medicine, any other age of medicine. American companies were the first to produce a verifiably safe and effective vaccine. Together, we will defeat the virus and we will soon end the pandemic and we will save millions and millions of lives, both in our country and all over the world. And we've already started. Thank you again to every person here today and for the incredible achievements uh, that you've done. You're going to be very proud of this day and you're going to be very proud of this period of time because nobody thought this was possible. Nobody thought it was even remotely possible to do what we've done in a period of less than nine months, uh, something that just not uh, even thinkable. And uh, we took a lot of heat when we said this is our goal, and we frankly weren't even quite uh, using the numbers that we use. We far exceeded what we thought. If we would have said sometime next year, I think most people would have said that would be great, that would be a miracle. Uh, but we did it long before sometime next year. So now I want to ask several leaders who have been crucial in this effort to join me on stage as I sign the executive order to ensure that American citizens have first priority to receive American vaccines. And then we're going to be working with other countries all over the world. And I think we'll be able to start doing that almost immediately also because we have millions of doses coming in. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great honor. Questions, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Any questions, please? Question? Yes, please. Yeah, well, CDC puts out their guidelines and the very important guidelines. But uh, I think this, I think that the vaccine was our goal. That was number one, because that was the way uh, 
And it was the way it ends. Plus, you do have an immunity. You develop immunity over a period of time. And I hear we're close to 15 percent. I'm hearing that. And that is terrific. That's a very powerful vaccine in itself. Uh, and just tremendous progress has been made. Uh, one of the reasons we do show so many, and I say this and I've been saying it for a long time, so many cases is because of the fact that we have 200 million tests and you take, uh, I think India is actually in second place with just a fraction of that number. So we're uh, many times greater than the second country and India has 1.4 billion people where, where our testing program has been incredible. And we actually are also coming out with new tests very shortly that will make the process even easier and you won't need doctors necessarily to do the test. So we have some incredible tests coming out in a very short period of time. Yeah, please. Uh, some of these scientific officials here in this room have encouraged Americans not to travel this holiday season, not to go to large gatherings. Across the street, you've been holding holiday parties with hundreds of people, many not wearing masks. Why are you modeling a different behavior to the American people than what your yeah. scientists tell? Well, they're Christmas parties, and uh, frankly, we've reduced the number very substantially, as you know. And I see a lot of people at the parties wearing masks. I mean, I, ha I would say that uh, I look out at the audience at those parties, and we have a lot of people wearing masks, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, please, uh, over here. Go ahead. The next administration will be the one, ultimately, that implements a lot of the distribution of this vaccine and will oversee much of the future of the way Operation Warp Speed goes forward. Why not include members of the Biden transition team as part of this summit that you're hosting today? Well, we're going to have to see who the next administration is, because uh, we won in those swing states, and uh, there was uh, terrible things that went on. So we're going to have to see who the next administration is. But whichever the next administration is, will really benefit by what we've been able to do with this incredible science, uh, the doctors, all of the people that came up, the lab technicians, the, wor the work that's been done is incredible. And it will be incredible for the next administration. And hopefully the next administration will be the Trump administration, because you can't steal hundreds of thousands of votes. You can't have fraud and deception and all of the things that they did and then slightly win a swing state. And you just have to look at the numbers, look at what's been on tape, look at all the corruption, and we'll see. You can't win an election like that. So hopefully the next administration uh, will be the Trump administration, a continuation, which has led us to the highest stock markets we've ever had, the best employment numbers we've ever had, a rebuilt military. Uh, if you look at uh, the tax reductions are the greatest in history, the regulation reductions, the greatest in history. It leads us to Space Force, which nobody thought was possible. All of the things we've done and we were rewarded with a victory. Now, let's see whether or not somebody has the courage, whether it's a legislator or legislatures or whether it's a justice of the Supreme Court or a number of justices of the Supreme Court. Let's see if they have the courage to do what everybody in this country knows is right. I received almost 75 million votes, the highest number of votes in the history of our country for a sitting president, 12 million more than the 63 million we received four years ago. President Obama received 3 million less in his second term, and he won easily. I received 12 million more, which, by the way, is a record, 12 million more. And they say that when the numbers came out and the numbers came through machines and all of those ballots were taken away and added, all you have to do is turn on your local television set and you'll see what happened with thousands of ballots coming out from under tables, with all of the terrible things you saw. All you have to do is take a look and if somebody has the courage, I know who the next administration will be. And I'll tell you what, life will be much easier for this country because of what we've done right now. And because of a lot of the people in this room, the job you've done on the vaccine, together with a lot of others, has been a modern day miracle. And it's really been acknowledged as such. And I want to thank you. I want to give you my love. And I want to give you my thanks because you're very special people. And now, Good luck. You distribute that, General, and really set records, okay? Set records just like we've been doing for four years. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, Right Side Broadcasting Network. I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor and CEO of MyPillow, and I've got some great news for you. Today, you can save up to 66% off all my products, from my MyPillows to my Giza Dream Sheets, my towels, my Roll and Go Travel Pillows, my mattress topper. I have over 100 products that you're gonna save up to 66% using the promo code RSBN, Right Side Broadcast Network, RSBN. Use that promo code at MyPillow.com or call 800-836-7566. That's 800-836-7566. Remember to use the code RSBN. And here's the great news. Half the money is going to support Right Side Broadcast Network, one of the best networks I've ever seen. Thank you thankful for Mike Lindell and MyPillow and MyPillow.com as you just saw the video. Uh, like I said, folks, it's about being a patriot here. Uh, Mike Lindell is definitely a patriot. We certainly appreciate everything he's done for this country. Uh, great product and also uh, proceeds of MyPillow.com go to right here at Right Side Broadcasting. We certainly appreciate uh, him on that. Also, it looks like we are getting some people coming out in the building behind us at the Eisenhower where the press conference just wrapped up and of course as you heard um, many things come into play to get this vaccine uh, to the American people uh, an effective vaccine and it's been in record time and it's, it's been a joint effort between the private sector and the government uh, bring, coming together and making sure we get this vaccine to market and of course you heard some of the, com the questions from the media there in that room in regards to uh, whether or not the next administration will be an administration um, that will take, you know, will take the lead from there and become um, beneficiary, beneficiaries of this vaccine. And Philip, one of the questions a guy asked was, with the Biden administration, this is something that was very critical of whether or not uh, anyone from the Biden administration was a part of, of this uh, Operation Warp Speed. And of course, uh, President Trump responded to that question with, well, that next administration is yet to be determined, and he thinks uh, it will be the Trump administration. So uh, we're excited this vaccine and great optimism from the president. We just saw the president walk by, walk back into the West Wing here. Uh, it was a far shot, hard to grab, but uh, he did just walk from the Eisenhower Executive Office Building back into the White House where he'll continue his daily duties. The president has been optimistic about this vaccine. He believes that this will set us back on the, on the right foot, headed in the right direction, and we will see what happens moving forward. Uh, also, I just want to go ahead and thank all of our supporters and all of our listeners and viewers who watch Right Side Broadcasting. What we're doing is truly unprecedented, and it's only done because of your support. There's a few ways you could you could uh, donate to us. You could go ahead and uh, donate through the YouTube Super Chat. There's an option there. You could uh, go online to rsbnetwork.com forward slash donate, I believe, and you could go ahead and pay through a credit card right there. And then uh, you can send a, a check to, to our address. I don't know the address I, offhand, but if you go to our website and, and click on the donate tab, there's all the options yep, there. Absolutely. So, great way to just support all of our efforts here at Right Side Broadcasting. All right, so there you have it, uh, right here from the White House. And remind you, we'll be on the road tomorrow, uh, not only to the bus tour, but we also will be in Wisconsin. I'll be there. Uh, at the Wisconsin uh, hearings there, all in, in regards to uh, voter fraud in that state. And of course, we're on the road here in the week. This coming Saturday, uh, the March for Trump right here in Washington. Philip and myself will be there covering that as well. Of course. As always, signing out here in Washington. Goodbye. God bless. We'll see you next time. and we make it possible. Make no mistake.